This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. Everybody knows that here in the holy city of Jerusalem, there's a concept of a Yushalmi chassid. And it's kind of hard to define what that means. But when people ask one another, what type of chassid is that guy over there? And someone says, ah, he's a Yushalmi. Everybody seems to understand. This concept of a Yushalmi Jew started many years ago. And in the old city of Jerusalem, there was one exceptional and humble Yushalmi Jew whose name was Reb Yudo Holtzman. Rebutal was known as a Talmud Chacham and also a deeply insensitive person who genuinely cared about his fellow Jews. Together with some of his friends who were noted Talmidei Chachamim, they put together a small group that were known as the Baalei Halacha, the masters of Jewish law or Shuchan Aruch. And this group decided that they were going to learn Halacha deeper all the time and not just learn it, but make an extra special effort to pay attention to performing every halacha as it's truly meant to be. Rabbi Yudu was a very poor Jew, like many of the Jews in Jerusalem at the time, and he had no children. But any time he would hear about a fellow Jew suffering, it would break his heart, and he would do everything he could to help that special Jew. And so, at his insistence, the Gabei Tzedakah, the people who collected charity in the old city of Jerusalem, would always stop by his home. And Rebuto said to them, I might be poor, but it doesn't mean that I can't give tzedakah. And so the tzedakah collectors were always at Rebuto's broken down home. It happened that one time there was a simple tailor who was known in the old city of Jerusalem as the Parisian tailor. And he needed an operation in the old Hadassah hospital. Being very poor himself, he didn't have the money for the operation. And so the tzedakah collectors went around trying to raise the considerable amount of money of 60 pounds so that the Parisian tailor could have the operation. And when the Gabbai Tzedakah, whose name was Reb Zaydel, came to Reb Yudel's home and told him about the Parisian tailor and the operation and the money that they needed, Reb Yudel sat in his house in his broken chair and he said, Oy vey, oy vey, nebach, it's terrible, how unfortunate, and kept repeating again and again, oy vey. Nebach, oy vey, oy vey. Reb Zaydel didn't really expect Reb Yudel to give any money. He was more there to make Reb Yudel feel good. He knew that Reb Yudel was poor himself. And Reb Yudel, he sighed and he said, Ah, you know how much I wish I could help. But you know how little money I have? And you know everything that I've given you over the last year has come from my maser money, from the 10 or 20% of tzedakah that a Jew is obligated to give. And Rabbi Yudu said, you know, I'd love to give. And you know, the needs of the Jews are so great. And you're probably wondering, from where do I get all this money from? I said, so I'll tell you. I have a little game that I play. I borrow against my future maser. So I say, look, you know, in the future, I'll probably earn this much money. So I can afford to give this much tzedakah. And then I'll pay it back in the future. He said, but you know, this could go on forever. And so I made a rule for myself that I don't borrow against the Maser money if it's been more than a year that I'm overdrawn on my future account. And Reb Zaydel, at this point, I'm already a year overdrawn on my future Maser. And I feel so bad for the tailor and his family. I don't know what to do. Oh, Hashem, please send a refuash nema, complete recovery to the Parisian tailor. And Reb Zaydel, he understood this. He didn't really expect to get any money from Reb Yudel. And he nodded and he said, I understand. And then he got up and left Reb Yudel's house. As Reb Zaydel was about half a block from Reb Yudel's house, Reb Yudel came running after him. Wait a minute! Wait a minute, Reb Zaydel, come back! The Ribono Shel Alam, the master of the world, has suddenly given me a great idea. Ah, 
What an inspiration I have. Zaidel, Zaidel, come back, come back, please. And so Reb Zaidel, even though he was a little confused, he turned around and went back into Reb Yudel's home. They sat down in the dining area, which had a lot of broken furniture, a broken table, broken chairs. And Reb Zaidel sat on a chair that he wasn't even sure was going to hold him up. And Reb Yudel continued. He was very excited. He said, Zaidel, Zaidel, you don't get it. The Ribbonu Shalom, he put such an idea in my head. Oh, this is such a good idea. I can help the tailor. Yes, yes, this plan can work. Listen, Reb Zaidel, I want you to go to one of the largest gemachs, one of the largest loan societies in Jerusalem, and tell them to lend you 20 pounds in my name, and I'll pay it back. So Reb Zaidel, he's shrugging his shoulders, and he says to Reb Yudel, how can you possibly pay back 20 pounds? That's a fortune, and you've already borrowed on your future maser. And Reb Yudel said, you see, I realized that every Shabbos, I spend half a shilling on buying the wine that I need to make Kiddush for Shabbos. But as you know, I'm sure, the halacha is that a person can make Kiddush on challah as well as wine. And if I make Kiddush on challah every week, then I'll have the extra money to pay back the loan. And Reb Yudel, he already had made a calculation, and he said at this rate, paying back half a shilling every week, it will take me a little more than 15 years to pay back the loan. And so Reb Zaidel, he went and he took the loan in Reb Yudel's name, and every week for over 15 years, that's exactly what Reb Yudel did. He took his half shilling that he would have spent on wine for making Kiddush and paid back the loan so the Parisian tailor could have the surgery that saved his life. This was a story that was given over by Reb Shalom Shvadaron, and he was telling the story on a Friday night at the Zichon Moshe Shul in Yerushalayim. And the young man came over to him and he said, Reb Shalom, Reb Shalom, I'm Reb Yudel's nephew. And I was at my uncle's home many times for Shabbos. And we never understood why he always made Kiddush on Chala. I never knew until you told the story tonight. And it turned out that the night that Reb Shalom was giving over this story was the yard site of Reb Yudel Holtzman. Being as that was kind of a short story, I have one more story for you. Reb Pesach of Malastovker was a chassid of the Alter Rebbe, and he was a noted scholar, chassid, and also Baal Nigunim who knew many Hasidic melodies. And it happened to be that he was also a physically strong person. He merited to have a long and healthy life and have a connection not just with the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, but the Mitla Rebbe and the Tzemach Tzedek. Once he saw there was a group of Goyim that were trying to beat up and God forbid do something worse to a Jewish girl. And Reb Pesach ran over and chased them away. The group of hoodlums were so angry at Reb Pesach they swore that they would take revenge. And they chased Reb Pesach, who eventually found a hiding place in a yard. And he was hiding beneath one of the barrels where these hoodlums couldn't find him. And these boys were pacing back and forth, shouting curses at Reb Pesach, saying, we're going to get you, we're going to get you. And they took their swords and started putting them through the barrels. And even though they didn't find Reb Pesach, one of the swords cut his head very deeply. And eventually, the wound healed and it stopped bleeding, but he continued to have pain in the spot where the sword had hit his head. He was once visiting the Alter Rebbe, and he told the Alter Rebbe about what had happened. The Alter Rebbe put his hands on Reb Pesach's head, and immediately the pain went away. The pain stayed away until the Alter Rebbe passed away. And as soon as the Alter Rebbe had died, Reb Pesach again felt the pain from where he had been cut by the sword. And so he went to the Mitla Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe's son who became Rebbe after him, and he told him the story and what his father had done. And so the Mitla Rebbe also put his hands on Reb Pesach's head. And as soon as he did, the pain disappeared. But Reb Pesach, he lived a long life. And eventually the Mitla Rebbe passed away, and the pain came back. So he went to the Tzemach Tzedek the son of the Mitla Rebbe, the grandson of the Alter Rebbe. He told him the story 
Netzemach Tzedek placed his hands on Reb Pesach's head and did, just like the Alter Rebbe and the Mitla Rebbe had done, the pain went away and did not come back for the rest of Reb Pesach's life. I la 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 la